Hello, this is Bryant Myers of Debunking Flat Earth, and I hope you enjoyed the debate last night. Um, I'm going to do a 15 to 20 part little breakdown of the debate, and it's going to be kind of divided into two parts, gravity and spin. So the first part, gravity, we're going to start today with the constancy of gravity. And the way I'm going to do these little breakdown videos, I'm going to play a little sound bite from Witsit and his claim, because boy, did he make a lot of claims with very little evidence. And then I'll respond to it. So let's, let's hear what Witsit says here about gravity. Again, downward acceleration does change drastically. We use uh, gravimeters all over the Earth, and it's, a different, it's different all over the Earth. The downward acceleration of little BB used interferometry. They also have spring-loaded ones. They show different rates, actually. So it's not this magical, consistent 9.81 meters per second squared every time. That isn't true. That's like a misnomer. I don't know why people say it. Um, basically, what he's saying is that the acceleration of gravity changes drastically around the world. And that's absolutely not true. Geodesists will carefully measure these things, you know, I mean, with, with just painstaking detail. And we know pretty accurately all the gravitational anomalies, everything that's going on. And you can see from this little chart here that, as I said in the debate, 9.77 to 9.83. Um, and I'll give you the exact numbers here in a minute, which is just, but it's very, very close to this. And some of the things that Witsit brought up, and we'll go over some of them, are the, well, the gravitational anomalies, which we'll look at some of those, and how rain increases um, the gravitational field or has a gravitational effect. And, and I actually, to be honest, I wasn't aware of those studies, so that was kind of new to me. But when you really think about it, yes, of course, anything with a large amount of mass is going to have a gravitational effect. It just turns out that those effects that, that he's claiming are just very, very tiny. So he's, he's wildly exaggerating uh, these gravitational anomalies and making them sound like there's some, something like a polarity reversal of, a light, of the electric field during a lightning storm. So, and I know why the flood earthers are trying to find this, this wild variation with the gravitational field is because they know the electric field, I, I don't know, just because of me, I'm sure they heard this from other people as well. I can't imagine this would be the first time they've been hearing this, but, but who knows? Uh, so th this is kind of, kind of new, that they're really starting to try to show that the gravitational field is, is, is drastically changing. And, and, I, and I don't know really why he kept saying that I said it was constant. I, I never said it was constant. I said it was 9.77 to 9.83. That's not constant, but it is a very narrow range, and it doesn't change by very much. So I stick to my guns when I say that the gravitational field um, across the Earth is very smooth. Now let's compare this to the global electric field circuit. And I, and I talk about this in my debate, so I won't you know, belabor the point. But, but basically, just to kind of summarize, is the electric field of the Earth which basically the fair weather electric field that he references of 100 volts per meter, you know, that's going up to about uh, roughly 50 kilometers or 31 miles. And it, it's effectively becomes zero there because as you can kind of see from this chart here from the thunderstorms, at a certain point, the, the, the atmosphere becomes more and more and more conductive and the electric field inside a conductor is zero. But when you get to this highly conductive area, the, the electric field is going down to zero. So we know gravity goes well. I mean, it doesn't, it extends out theoretically to infinity, but, but you know, from the Earth to the moon, there, there's, there's gravity for the, for the whole way from the you know, Earth to the moon extending out to the rest of the universe, you know. But from the Earth itself, the gravitational field just doesn't end. Now, I did write it, you can see here, this is just an email to Wissett, because during the debate, I'm like, yeah, show me, show me some evidence for these dramatic changes in gravity. And I didn't get a response yet. Maybe he's just been busy. Hopefully, he'll respond to me. So I did a little digging, and I'm going to go through a few of those things here. But I just want to start with this, this, this part right here, where uh, it's pretty well documented that the Earth's gravitational field is what, close to what I said. But to be really exact... Um, the Earth's surface of the gravitational field has a low point in, in Nevada, and then in Peru, it, it reaches a maximum at 9.8337. So it's going from 9.7639 all the way up to 9.8337. So I said 9.77 to 9.83. I was very close with it, very close. So if you're going to make the claim that I was wrong, you need to provide me with evidence, something that you don't seem to know how to do. Okay, so now as far as the gravitational anomalies go, um, 
This is a, a geoid. So we typically talk about the Earth, we, we say it's approximately spherical. If we want to get a little more accurate, we'll say it's an oblate spheroid. Because at the equator, there's a little bit of a bulge, about you know 14 miles in radius, 28 miles in, 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 in diameter uh, difference from the poles. Uh, but if we want to get really, really detailed, and this is where that whole silly pear th shape thing came from, uh, we'll talk about the Earth as a geoid. And what Neil deGrasse um, Tyson was saying there was that when you do these exaggerated maps, because you do have to make them exaggerated, that's why you can't see the differences. I mean, if we do it to scale, it's going to look like a cue ball. You're not going to see any differences. So they got to, like, exaggerate. So when you exaggerate it, at least on one study, it kind of had a little bit of a pear shape, and of course, that just flat earthers just don't understand how you know ge geodesy works and how ge geodesists do their job. But uh, but but aside from all that, let's let's look at these anomalies, these so-called dramatic gravitational or uh, acceleration changes. So now, what you're reading at the bottom there is milligals. So this is a unit of acceleration, and it's 0.01 you got to basically multiply meters per second squared by 0 0.01. So what we're looking at is milli. So again, milli is going to be like this, this chart here from minus 50. That's going to be 0 0.05 gal. So we got to like go two more decimal places. So it's going to end up being 0 0.00053 zeros um, up to the highest. I mean, from minus to from minus 0 0.0005 up to 0 0.0005. So this is not much of a change. In fact, like I said, the, the centrifugal acceleration is 0 0.03. So we're, not, we're talking about two more decimal places, Witsit. Where's this dramatic change in acceleration? And it's, it's nothing even close to being outside the range, as I said. I mean, it's well, I mean, again, it's a whole decimal place smaller. So let's go on to the next one here. Now, you know, giving credit where credit is due. I, I was not aware of the studies on rainfall and, and gravity. Um, but, I mean, it does make sense because anything that's got mass is going to have a gravitational field. So if you've got a big thunderstorm with a lot of water, you know, or rain or monsoons coming down, yeah, that's going to create a gravitational effect. But now, based on this study, what do we got here? 0.4 gal per centimeter. So this 0.4 gal, what does, that, what does that equate to? So that's only point. 0, 0, 0.04 meters per second squared. So a little bit more than some of the other anomalies. So when you have a local rainstorm, there definitely are gravitational effects. So I was, I was incorrect when I said that there wasn't. So, you know, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to admit I made a mistake. Um, but it doesn't take the gravitational acceleration range out of what I stated. This is a whole other decimal place. I mean, it's, again, another decimal place to the right. So it's not going to change what I said. Now, the last thing, um, which he did mention about gravity waves from the atmosphere, uh, and that, that does happen. Uh, but these gravity waves, again, are, are just going to have incredibly subtle. And again, the articles that I read about this is they're just so subtle and they're so minuscule. But, it, I, you know, again, I, 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 I made a mistake if I said they don't exist. But, but again, they're so small that they're not having any effect that's going to change that roughly nine, well, maybe I would say 9.76 now based on what I saw with that study with Nevada, but uh, just to round down instead of rounding up. But it's still going to be 9.76, 9.77 to 9.83, just what I said. But in this video, I just wanted to go through that um, what I stated in the debate, I stick to it because it is accurate. Uh, again, whatever anomalies for, due to, you know, geology, due to rain and weather, they're just minuscule. So thanks for watching this video. I, I got probably 15 to 20 more coming um, from my debate with Witsit. Uh, again, uh, please do like and subscribe my channel. I really appreciate all the love and support from MC Toon. He really helped boost my subscriber count and sent a lot of people my way. So I'm infinitely grateful for for MC and all his help and all his support and all his, you know, all his subscribers that are supporting me. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video, probably tomorrow. All right. Have a good night. Bye-bye.